the next step would be to train the SVM model. So I can say here, train SVM. Double click on it and try cage. So the first thing that I check is my training data. Is this one equals equals null or my y underscore training data or x x underscore train data dot rows are less than one don't want this then we can say throw new new exception and we can say load training data features if it is not then we can go ahead and create an svm model so i will go on top svm call it SV, svm model and here we can say svm model is equal to new svm model And let me write some important parameters dot set kernel SVM kernel dot RBF. This is most used and it has produced very good accuracy. And SVM model dot what type of model that I want to use is SVM dot the SVM classification uh, SVM and you can see is for number of classes greater than two and in my case since there are 15 classes of different people so this is more suitable and uh, the termination criteria that I want to use is the term criteria so if it does not train or if it does not reach the minimum errors then i should stop it after let's say 1000 iterations and maybe if my error is less than 0 0.00 let's say 1 then it should stop either one of them if it reaches the training should stop and the c the cost parameter uh, that i said actually these should be calculated on some validation data by check, checking which one will produce the optimal results, but that itself is a different uh, research work. So I'm just assuming it to be 250 SVM model dot gamma for the since I'm using the RBF. So let's say zero, zero, one. Let's see if they produce something better. Things are for us or not. So this is the situation when I just want to create an, a new SVM model and I want to train it. But there could be some situations where I already trained the model and saved it. And if I want to reuse that model, then in that case, one thing I can do is if let's say I trained it and saved it somewhere, I say file dot exists. And let's say I give it a name ace underscore svm so this is the file that i let's say after training i created it and if already if this one exists then we can say svm dot load that model instead of uh, retraining it again so this one since i'm not giving any path here so this will be inside the bin folder of my execution folder and then we can write a message in this lbl dot text trained model loaded okay else if we have no model saved yet then i will do this and of course i will save it as well but after training i will save it uh, in fact and to train the model what actually we need to do is uh, we can create a training data data it is a class basically in a EMG UCV 
I got a train data is equal to the EMG you see. So let me create the train data. And this one is saying the input array samples. These are the training data that we have is in train underscore x underscore train. What is the layout? How I have arranged them? So these are basically arranged in rows. It means every row represents a person. So we will say that MGU data layout dot row samples. So the rows basically represent the sample. And the third parameter is the response. We have the responses in our Y underscore train. And that's it. And then we can use this SVM model dot train. And remember that this SVM dot train method is expecting this train data. And that's it. Since this one is returning a bool representing if it has been trained or not, one thing I can do here is if I can write it inside this. If SVM.train and if my model is trained, then we can say a message and also save it. Let's say SVM model save with the same name as I have just created. So I don't need to retrain again and again for the same data. And LBL message does text, we can say equal to model trained and safe. Trained and saved. Else, if it is not trained, then we can give a message. Text equal to model failed to train and then we can give it as a message in red color, color red. something has happened something bad has happened and by the way if we do something like this then maybe before this one i set it to be um, first time let's say some error happened and then we should remove that error so in the beginning i set it to zero okay so and that's it so for the second last step i am going to do test svm okay and to test the svm double click on it we have another try cage block so here i am going to check if my x underscore test equals equals null or x underscore test dot count sorry rows less than one then we can throw an exception that load testing data otherwise we can go ahead and extract features for the a test data in the same way as we did for the training. Remember that the method for feature extraction should be same for both test and the train data. So what I can do is we can use the same method calculate features and this time I'm going to pass the testing data and this one will basically return me a tuple as you know that this one will return a tuple of floats and matrices. And we have already defined a matrices, call them x underscore test and y underscore test. So this x underscore test is the features and these are the labels. So once we extract the same features as we did for the training uh, part of the data, now we did the same feature extraction for the test part of the data. And then we can evaluate it by giving it to the SVM model. And also if uh, my SVM model equals equals null, we can say that throw new exception, SVM is not made. Okay, so now we have the features and the SVM model is also ready we can go ahead and loop through all the test data and pass it to the SVM for classification. So I'm going to write it 
or i is equal to one x underscore test dot rows how many rows do we have and we get the prediction for every row prediction is equal to svm model dot predict using the predict method and here it is expecting the what is the input so the input is basically x underscore test dot get row so i throw and give it to the svm for prediction by the way i also need to by the way i also need to compare it with the test labels these uh, labels uh, we we can basically compare and find the accuracy so let's say that i create a, a list of integers let's say list of integers to store them both of them let's say predicted label so is equal to new list and i will also control c control v this is for actual labels labels let's say labels predicted labels and actual labels and i'm going to store them over here so the predicted labels labels dot aid i'm just going to add this prediction yet and the actual labels where i have declared this actual label okay dot aid i can do something like this uh, actual label is y of test actually y test of i comma zero and since this one is returning a float so what we can do is convert it into an integer first so like this will be okay so this is the prediction that we have or the SVM has produced so we add it into this uh, predicted labels and uh, also we have the actual labels uh, which we just know from the y underscore test if both are same it means that it has correctly done it if it has not then it means that there is some so let's go ahead and do a plot of the confusion matrix by the way, in, in one of my previous videos, I uh, implemented the confusion matrix. I hope I have that method somewhere here, compute confusion matrix, and uh, let's use it. You can check the previous videos how I calculated the confusion matrix. So let's say CM is equal to helper class dot compute confusion matrix. And this one is expecting actual labels dot to array comma uh, predicted labels dot to array so this one will return us confusion matrix let's see how it uh, it did and uh, we i also added a method which we which they calculated the can computer matrices so this one will basically return the sort of you can say the Precision accuracy and recall. So I call it matrices is equal to helper class dot calculate matrices. And this is also again taking the same parameters. So I will just copy and paste it here. And also it needs a CM. Okay, so we provided the confusion matrix and these labels, it will return us the accuracy and all those stuff and we can display something like this string results is equal to we can format it test samples actual labels dot count backslash n accuracy is equal to matrix is zero location is the accuracy do a like multiply by 100 also and then can put a percentage sign also 
backslash n recession is equal to over here we can say matrix of one multiplied by 100 and we can put a percentage sign as well and also the acceleration recall is equal to matrix of two multiplied by 100 and then put a percentage and also there was a form that i created in my one of my previous videos that we can basically create a confusion matrix and show it using the form so let's say form confusion matrix form is equal to new form and this is expecting the cm and also the results string It will display us the results and we can show this form as a dialog. Okay, maybe just show it. I did a mistake here, and of course, I should do it over here and then check. <laughs> I did a little bit reverse, but first, I should have a model. Okay, that's great. And also when I was training the SVM, I should also make it something like that. Cursor is equal to cursors dot weight cursor. And I can also do after I finish this task, I can add a finally block. And uh, this finally block will be the default. So let's go ahead and run again okay so let's go and load the data this is the data that i want to load <clears throat> so the data is loaded the next step is to test train split it is also done and the hog feature extraction is also completed train svm so the trained model loaded because we had already saved the model. So that's why it says, now let's test it. So it displayed the confusion matrix and the accuracy. It says that we have accuracy is 97.77% precision and recall and test samples are 45. So you can see that when we used 80%, so three images were used for testing and eight will be used for training and three three represents that these have been successfully classified okay this is the situation where we have a problem uh, for this class eight i think sorry for this one uh, this is class number eight that has been uh, correctly classified into two classes but only one image has been classified as uh, label seven. That is the only problem, I think. And the rest is all showing three, three, three were uh, classified correctly for them. So it's not a bad accuracy, by the way. Uh, the results are okay. So we need to go back and look at maybe increase the features or do something to get 100%. And also, if you notice, uh, we will see and also we will see visualize the data and see based on the labels which have been done are classified let's visualize the results also 